Europe's giant Solfatara supervolcano has been on a rampage this week, spewing an incredible amount of smoke and ash into the sky. We've got daily updates for you here. But first, let's take a look at what's going on. The Italian volcano rumbled back to life on Sunday after a 13-year slumber. An earthquake swarm preceded the awakening of Italy's most dangerous volcano, which scientists have been watching closely for several months. Starting in November last year, seismographs recorded nearly 40,000 imperceptible earthquakes just below the surface of the Campania region. The rumblings reached their peak in December, when the tremors were felt across Naples and nearby Pozzuoli. Authorities even went so far as to issue a warning to residents living near Mount Vesuvius, although they later downgraded the alert level after the frequency of the earthquakes decreased. Then on Sunday, the 12th of February, the volcano began venting steam and ash, sending a plume nearly 10 kilometers or 6 miles high into the air. Since then, ash and gas have continued to pour out of the crater at a rate of about 300,000 cubic meters per day, together with sulfur dioxide gas at a rate of 700 tons per day. A light show ensued as the ash plume mixed with seawater and was illuminated by lightning. Volcanic experts raised the alert level from 1 to 2, noting that the activity may continue for weeks or months. So, why did the supervolcano wake up after a 13-year nap? What are we to make of these events? And how might they affect the millions of people living in its vicinity? Well, it's good to know that scientists have been expecting this for some time now. But before we get into all of that, it's important to understand what makes this volcano so special and so scary. Solfatara is considered a supervolcano because it has the potential to produce an eruption of gargantuan proportions. It's located just northeast of Naples in the Phlegrian Fields Volcanic Complex. A group of overlapping calderas, or collapsed volcanic craters formed over a hotspot in the Earth's crust. Solfatara is actually the youngest of six large volcanoes in the area. It's also the most active. If you want a quick comparison, Solfatara is to Mount Vesuvius, what Kilauea is to Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Kilauea is currently the world's most active volcano, having erupted 33 times since 1950. Mauna Loa, by contrast, erupts only rarely and hasn't done so since 1984. Solfatara, like Kilauea, has been quite restless in recent years. There have been almost 1,000 recorded eruptions here since the 15th century. Some have been small, while others have caused major damage. In 1492, a series of powerful explosions ejected rocks and ash into the air, killing seven people and covering parts of Naples in a layer of volcanic debris. Then, in 1538, the crater floor collapsed, creating a caldera measuring about one kilometer or 0.6 miles across and 30 meters or 100 feet deep. Lava flowed out of the newly formed vent, engulfing several villages and killing dozens of people. But for the most part, Solfatara has remained relatively quiet, that is, until the early 1900s, when seismic activity picked up once again. On June 1912, the volcano rumbled back to life with a series of explosive eruptions that sent a thick ash cloud 30 kilometers or 19 miles into the atmosphere. More than 10 million cubic meters of material was ejected during the eruption, which destroyed buildings and forced thousands to evacuate. A pyroclastic flow descended down the volcano's eastern flank, traveling at speeds of up to 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. That was the largest eruption of Solfatara in the 20th century and the biggest in recorded history, and yet nothing could have predicted what came next. In 1926 the earth trembled as an earthquake of magnitude 4.8 struck the Naples region. People ran into the streets in terror, many never returned. The quake triggered a massive landslide that swept across the landscape at a speed of 175 kilometers per hour or 110 miles per hour. The earthquake and landslide caused such devastation that the Italian government intervened with financial aid. But by the end of 1926 most of the residents still hadn't returned home. Another deadly earthquake hit the area in 1980 but people had long since learned the lessons of 1926 and evacuated in time. And so it is today. Every year, 
More than three million tourists come to marvel at the volcano's otherworldly landscapes and ancient ruins. Few would think that it's capable of anything more than belching steam and spewing sulfur dioxide. So what happens now? Well, it's natural for people to be alarmed at the sight of smoke billowing into the sky. After all, the last time Europe witnessed a plume of ash rising above the horizon, it signaled the end of the continent's greatest city. But those fears may be somewhat misplaced in this instance. Scientists knew this was coming, they just didn't know when. It all has to do with how supervolcanoes work. Unlike regular volcanoes, whose magma chambers are typically found deep beneath the Earth's crust, magma related to supervolcanoes sits much closer to the surface. That's why you can see the magma chamber at Solfatara from the surface. It's right there under your feet. Most scientists believe that magma from Solfatara comes from a reservoir located 10 to 30 kilometers or 6 to 20 miles beneath the surface. The magma probably originates from deep within the Earth's mantle where temperatures reach 3,700 degrees Celsius or 6,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, rock is slowly turned into magma by the heat. The magma then makes its way upward, buoyed by gases dissolved within it. Eventually, it reaches the magma chamber where it rests until something triggers its ascent. Scientists don't really know what that trigger is, but they suspect it has to do with pressure. Take Yellowstone National Park's supervolcano, for example. In the summer of 1985, a series of earthquakes rattled the park. Magma began moving upward toward the surface. By August, steam was pouring out of the ground, and by late October the entire park was glowing orange with geothermal activity. But no eruption ever came. Yellowstone's supervolcano remains dormant to this day, but at Solfatara, the movement of magma has been detected by modern instruments. Using a technique called continuous GPS monitoring, scientists can track changes in the Earth's surface down to the millimeter. This helps them determine whether magma is accumulating beneath the volcano. Between 2017 and 2021, GPS measurements revealed that the summit of the volcano had risen by 12 centimeters or 5 inches. Now that doesn't sound like much but it's enough to indicate that magma is pushing up from below. At the same time, satellite radar data showed that the ground around the volcano was bulging outward, forming a dome-like structure that extended one kilometer or 0.6 miles from the summit. What's more, the volume of sulfur dioxide gas being released into the atmosphere had increased by several hundred tons per day. All of this pointed to one conclusion, the awakening of a sleeping giant. Scientists knew it would happen sooner or later, but they couldn't predict when, and now it seems it's happening right now. And while scientists will continue to monitor the situation closely, there's no need for concern. Not yet, anyway. It's unlikely that Solfatara will erupt violently any time soon, if ever. If history is any indication, its next eruption will consist of lava flows rather than pyroclastic flows, meaning the surrounding towns will have plenty of time to evacuate. Still, it's important to remember that Solfatara is a very real threat to the millions of people living nearby. It's not just some abstract possibility, so we'll keep you posted should anything change.